Hey everybody, welcome back to Straight Axle Dubs. Today, I'm going to be giving you a sort of in-depth tour of Toilet Green right here. So, starting off at the front, uh, one of the first things people notice, or that I noticed when I first saw this car was this bumper right here. So, that is a bumper from some sort of tractor, uh, I believe. Tony, the previous owner of the car that put it together, saw that on Craigslist for $40. It was uh, it was being used as a spice rack in some couple's kitchen. So he bought it and then he thought, oh, this would look cool on a bug. So we put it on the bug and there's that store. And then next up is these headlights. Uh, normally there would have been the clear lens, but I bought these, I think, probably late June, early July. Uh, they're, I don't know if you can see that, octane lighting. Uh, bought those off of eBay, I believe. They work pretty well. Um, this one, you can see it's kind of like angled, so it doesn't shine super, super well, but it shines well enough. Hey, uh, another thing is these wheels. Now, these are not VW wheels. They are off of a Pontiac GTO, uh, all four, matching set. I'll get to the rears in a second. Um, Pontiac had the Rally 1 and the Rally 2 wheels. These are the Rally 2s, I believe. And there are adapters, which I don't think you can see. If you look under, yeah, you won't be able to see that. But there are adapters from the VW 4x130 to the Pontiac 5x127. Um, also, I did the AC Industries disc brake kit. Probably can't see this, but we can see it's a rotor instead of a drum. I was uh, I was a bit skeptical at first when I put that in, but after driving around with it for probably almost six months now, I can say it really does help. And if you're thinking about it, do it because these cars came with drum brakes all around from factory. And honestly, it's kind of a death wish because if you're in traffic or if you, you know, have to stop real quick, they get hot too quick. And those disc brakes definitely make a difference. And these panels. So Tony, the previous owner of this car, had a trailer with this diamond sort of aluminum plating on it. And he decided, hey, that would look cool on a bug. So he put it on there and it does look really cool. It fits sort of the punk rock look of the car. Uh, it's on all four or both doors and then we are there and we are there. Uh, and then that also eliminates the, you know, stock grab handle for the door to be able to close it. So I got a piece of rope on this side, a piece of rope on there. These radio grills, normally they would have been painted the color of the car, which is this green, but I decided to paint them yellow to sort of stick with the John Deere sort of tractor theme. Same with the glove box door. And if you notice, there's all these magnets. When uh, when I got the car, there was no headliner. Um, the headliner had been long gone. So what we decided to do was, we put magnets all over the roof, which it's unique. Uh, there's a lot of unique headliners that have been done for these cars over the years. And it gives it a cool, like, sort of pop. Uh, and then back there, all right, my traffic cone for when I break down, wheel chalks, so you have to change a tire. That's a towel for the steering wheel because it's Texas and it's summer right now, so it's hot. Uh, and then I have a spare set of plug wires, my spare accelerator cable, spare clutch cable, e-brake boot. I have the oil, since this car does leak, Volkswagen well, leak, it's common. I use Mobile One Delvac 1540. It's, uh, it's diesel oil, so it has more zinc. And it's also 1540 is thicker, so with these cars leaking, it may leak out a little slower. Uh, all in on to what I run, I haven't had any issues with it. Also, there's an absence of radio. So, to make up for that, I have this Bluetooth speaker. Um, a lot of people do an aftermarket radio with Bluetooth or aux, for, and that fits in the radio hole, but for now, I just decided to do Bluetooth because it's simple. I can just connect my phone to it and be right on down the road. Hobby Lobby table organizer. I think it was about 15 or $16. And it fits these 32 ounce 
cups. Uh, it also fits a Yeti, which is what I drink out of most of the time. It'll fit, you know, coffee cups, whatever. Uh, just good to have, and it's pretty easily accessible. Another thing is the AC. Um, these cars don't have AC. You know, they have vent windows, but that only gets you so far. So this fan, uh, it works. So if I, if I turn the key to on, you can see it has a high mode and a low mode. The thing that I did is this shifter. So a company called Cool Rides SoCal Customs, I don't know if you'll be able to read that super well. They make these super awesome short throw shifters uh, and you can customize them. I got the carbon ball or shift knob, whatever you want to call it. And then it has the green little base here to sort of match the green on the car. And you can see, I don't know if I'll be able to shift it without pushing the clutch, but first, second, third, fourth. Is It doesn't have a reverse lockout. So the normal VW shifters, the stock ones, have a lockout, this one doesn't. So at first it did take a little getting used to because sometimes going from first to second, I go from first, sometimes pull it on over to reverse, which you'll hear the grinding, you know, hey, I shifted into the wrong gear. But otherwise, once you're used to it, which I've been driving with it for about two and a half, almost three months now. So I'm pretty happy with it. And I can also show you the rear wheels, uh, same ones there. These are Cooper Cobras. These are famous, not famous, well, they're commonly used on muscle cars of the 60s and 70s, some 50s cars. And then I also have these beauty rings, these little chrome rings. A lot of the Pontiac wheels or Chevy GM Ford uh, would have had these from the factory. These didn't have them when I got the car. And recently, I believe in May, we came across a set and I thought, hey, I'll try them on the car. And they worked out pretty well, so I'm happy with them. Also, these cool taillights. This car, uh, the rear end's cut from what you can see. Uh, I guess it was in some sort of rear end collision at some point early in its life. And instead of getting the pieces and trying to weld them back on, they said, screw it, cut it off, make it a Baja. So with that, you have to deal with taillights because the stock ones will not really work well if you decide to do that. So these are Humvee taillights, military. Uh, so you've got your regular, I've got the tail light and brake light in this section and then turn signal in here and reverse light in there. Uh, now we get to the motor. This is a 1600 VW motor. Uh, I've got a pair of dual Cadron 40 carburetors. Uh, this one has the dog dish special for the lid there because the lid fell off. and. It's pretty much a stock motor, other than that. Um, we did put a lovely stinger on it because I had another exhaust. It was a dual cannon, I believe they call it, Baja exhaust, so it was separate. But that had one of the like inside baffle muffler parts come loose and break. So I'm having that one fixed. And so this was a temporary solution. Um, it's got a cool little... Baja coil mount. Uh, that's one of the cool things about this car. And with the rear end being cut, you can't really mount a deck lid. And so you have to deal with getting rain into your carbs, which you don't want to have happen because then you get a rusty motor, which is a new motor, which would not be fun. So I got this cowl, I it yellow, same yellow as the radio grills and glove box. Uh, it's a little different than the tractor bumper sort of yellow but it matches and it sort of keeps the yellow sort of theme with the car to fasten it sometimes i've seen people use just regular phillips screws which it works not my first choice so these are bumper ties uh in the motorsport world for drifting people would put these on their bumper so separate end and uh like this so you'd have this like on the body of your car and this on the bumper and then this little rubber tie so you can just take that off take your bumper off so you don't have to worry about crushing a bumper so with that i think i'm gonna get y'all a startup clip and then maybe do a little bit of a drive-by clip and then that should be it for the video all right let's start this thing up y'all can hear the beautiful sound of a no baffle stinger
right, I'm gonna cover a few more features I forgot. Um, first off, I have the pop-out window extenders. They are the Randar latches. I don't think you can read Randar. There you go. So normally the pop-out opens about this far, but these latches help them open to that far, and it helps with a lot of airflow. Uh, helps stay cool because more air is circulating through the vehicle, uh, and it's a big help. So another thing, the seat cushions. Where are they? Uh, I'm looking into getting covers, but these seats, I got a layer of leather from an old couch that was on the side of the road, put foam underneath it, hog ringed it, it's on there. Uh, it doesn't work super well, but it's okay. And this one is really the best one because you got your two little floor mats and then you got nothing. So it's not super comfortable for long drives, but it works. Last thing, but not certainly not least, is the wooden pallet floor mats. These are uh, obviously made from a pallet. We found one on, you know, the side of the curb for bulk pickup in our neighborhood and decided to make floor mats out of it. Uh, they work really well. I mean, they're cool and you sort of give it a nice look. Uh, you know, obviously they're re removable, so you just lift it up and out. Uh, if you need to work on the car, like if I had to take the pedals out, I could just lift it up and out and be good with it. But other than that, I think that covers everything. If y'all have questions about the car or things I've done to it or future plans for it, because there are some of those, stay tuned. Uh, be sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, be sure to like, share, uh, subscribe, obviously. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.